Hey, everybody, Leo Laporte here. Happy Friday. Time for another Hands on Mac. This week, I'm going to show you some useful photo management tools. Next. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody. I'm Leo Laporte. As you know, avid photographer. Um, and I think a lot of Mac users uh, do a lot with photos. So I want to show you a couple of tools that I've used for messing with photo attributes. And actually, the first tool is even more generate, general uh, than that. It's called a Better Finder Attributes. It's a $15 uh, shareware program, really beautifully done from the folks at publicspace.net. Let me show you their uh, website. This is what I would normally do probably in a command line, but of course, Macintosh is really all about a graphical user interface. So it is really a front end to a graphical front end to batch commands of the of the kind you'd use maybe scripting to do. Things like changing file creation dates, modification dates, uh, adjusting, and this is what photographers find useful, adjusting EXIF time and date to compensate for incorrect time zones or clocks that are wrong. Have you ever taken a picture and you forgot to tell your camera that you're in Paris, not in San Francisco? Well, this is an easy way to fix it in a batch mode. You can also, and I've done this a number of times, set the creation date of the file to match the capture date of the photo. When you copy files, backup files, move them around, often the creation date of the file changes to the current date. And honestly, that's not what I want in my photos. Uh, you can also do things like show invisible finders, remove all those .ds store uh, files uh, that Apple seems to create in every folder. There's a whole lot more you can do with it. This is a very powerful tool. And at only $15, I think something every photographer should have. Let me show you the interface. You can see we can choose the action, and there's a really long list of different actions. Let's say I want to uh, change the creation date of the photo to the capture date in the extended file information in my, in my file. Okay, so I could say change the date and time, change just the date, change just the time. And it supports, by the way, and this is really nice, not just JPEGs, uh, but also many raw formats, not all of them, but many raw formats. And so I've turned that on. Uh, I can uh, say, do I want to process just the files or do I want to do subfolders? Do I do, just want to do folders? And now let's take a folder. This is the 2016 Twit slideshow. And I'm going to just show you why this becomes a problem. This picture, which was obviously taken in 2016, ah, it has the correct date. So even though I've copied it around, uh, but this is an example. This picture, which was taken in 2016, shows a create date of 2017. That's not unusual. These create dates often are uh, uh, correlated to when you last copied the file or, or things like that. So I'm just going to take all of the files in this folder, drag them over here. Um, it's going to, the first time you run it on the Macintosh, thanks to Gatekeeper, it's going to say, oh, you want me to access that folder? And you say, yes. I've now got the folder in here. I can now actually, if I want, go through uh, all the files in the folder and see, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen. Or I could just perform the changes. Look how fast that worked. Now, all of the creation dates on all of these files are going to match the creation date of the actual photo, which means I could even sort these by date and uh, and they will be specific to the date it's taken. I guess there are a few 2017 photos in here, but at least these these creation file creation dates now match the capture date. I've had occasion to go through my entire 
folders when restoring from a backup my entire photo collection of more than 100,000 photos and re Jigger all of them. This is a very handy tool for, for doing that. You can remove things like uh, the creation date or the EXIF timestamp. You can change metadata, remove metadata. You can even make files uh, visible or invisible. It's really a very useful uh, tool. So well worth the $15. It's been around for a long time. A better finder attributes and uh, again, that comes from a company called uh, publicspace.net, or at least that's the, where, the, where the file is stored. Now, all you folks who studied along with me and Brew will also, uh, I'll have a little something for you. These are command line tools, which are even more powerful. There's two of them, both of which can be installed with Brew. So I'm going to do Brew install the EXIF tool, E-X-I-F-T-O-O-L. That is a very handy tool. In fact, let me show you the website for that that will allow you to do almost anything. This is an ancient tool written, I think, in Perl by Phil Harvey. Let me give you some idea. It will handle all kinds of files, including raw files from a huge variety of cameras. It's Windows and Mac. And this thing is an incredible power tool, but it is a command line program. And as a result, it is a little tricky to use. You're going to want to be looking at the man pages. You're going to want to, uh, you know, really kind of spend some time building that command line, testing it before you run it. It is extremely powerful. It can do, for instance, that uh, thing I was talking about, changing the file creation date to match the capture time in the EXIF. Very fast, very easy. It isn't the fastest tool out there. It may be not even as fast as Better Finder Attributes because it's written in Perl, so it has to fire up Perl and get it running. Uh, but boy, look at all the file formats it handles. Look at all the things it'll do. It's incredibly powerful. There's one more tool that I also recommend installing if you're a photographer. Brew install J-H-E-A-D, J-Head. This is also a very useful tool. Both of these are free, by the way. It uh, is just for JPEGs. It doesn't do RAW. Uh, EXIF tool does not only uh, JPEGs RAW, it also does movie files. It'll do a huge variety of files. But this is another very useful tool for m managing and fooling around with um, the uh, EXIF information, the file information. Uh, you can really uh, do a lot of things, including... Uh, get information from the EXIF that you can then manipulate later. So it's really uh, fantastic. You can rotate uh, images if uh, if you have timestamps that are off, just as you can with better finder attributes, you can do those manually. So for command line folks, uh, JHEAD and EXIF tool are great. JHEAD also, if you type JHEAD-H, will give you a list of commands that you can use in a kind of a simple way. I really think these three tools are, uh, are enough for almost any photographer if you want to manipulate your file names, creation dates. I actually decided to make all of my photos have logical names. I began it with Laporte. I used EXIF tool to do this. Began the name with Laporte, dash, the file, uh, the photo capture date, so the year 2004, dash 04 dash 01 uh, you could put the time in there too if you want and then a serial number so that they're unique so all the photos taken on that date have a unique name that's a very easy thing very fast thing to do with exif tool and really useful so that all of your photos have logical names you can just look at the name and at least know hey here's where this was taken if you wanted you could even do geography and, and things like that i uh, it's really a powerful tool better finder attributes fifteen dollars and for free, EXIF tool and JHEAD. Those are command line tools uh, and all very useful. And that's it for this edition of Hands on Mac. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. They recently surveyed 700 IT and security professionals across a range of industries. LastPass found that 82% said their business had been exposed to a risk due to poor identity and access management. Thankfully, LastPass can help you manage identities and promote good security behaviors even while your employees are remote. LastPass gives employees their own vault for storing every app and web login they use and lets employees share logins 
while keeping access to corporate data absolutely secure. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. That's Hands on Mac for another week. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.